turn off all cell phones, pagers, camera speakers, space heaters, hero phones, and anything else that will interfere with the audio portion of the briefing. And a reminder, do not stand up when the briefers come in, please. Thank you. What? <laughs> I intended our military audience. You can stand up. Okay.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brigadier General Fred Ruggiero, the Director of Air Force Public Affairs. Thank you very much for coming today. Today's press conference will be a single subject event to discuss the findings and recommendations of an Air Force report on the religious climate at the Air Force Academy. All briefers today are on the record. Please turn off your cell phones and other electronic devices. With us today is Mr. Dominguez, Acting Secretary of the Air Force, General Jumper, Chief of Staff of the Air Force, and Lieutenant General Brady, the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel. During the question period, please direct your question to uh, one specific individual, to the appropriate person for your question, and one follow-up. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Dominguez, who will make an opening statement. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, the United States Air Force releases a report on the religious climate at the US, U.S. Air Force Academy. Before I introduce the report's author, I want to make a few specific points. At the core of our airman ethos is respect. Whether it's based on religion, race, or gender, mutual respect is what enables us to do our job defending freedom. Instances of disrespect, no matter how unintentional, or limited toward other cadets, staff, or airmen are wrong and incompatible with what we do for this nation. Allegations of religious disrespect prompted me to direct an assessment of the re religious climate at the Air Force Academy. Above all else, our Air Force Academy is based on the same core values as the rest of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Our expectations are clear. All airmen, including cadets, faculty, and staff at the Air Force Academy, will live up to these values. The Agenda for Change, implemented approximately two years ago, placed renewed focus on officership and our core values. Applying the Agenda for Change, Lieutenant General John Rosa continues to make positive improvements to the Academy with the goal of developing future military leaders of character. General Rosa's focus on character development identified the issue of religious respect as an area of concern. He and his team have aggressively worked to emphasize religious respect and accommodation. He's been the right leader at the right time. He's done an outstanding job and continues to have the full support and confidence of Air Force leadership. With General Rosa's willing cooperation, the Deputy Chief of Staff of Personnel, Lieutenant General Roger Brady, assessed the Academy's religious climate. The 16-member group assisting General Brady included military and non-military members with representatives from the Navy and the Office of the Secretary of Defense. General Brady's report reaffirms the course set by the Agenda for Change, a renewed emphasis on officership based on our core values. His report identifies deficiencies and makes it clear we need to improve our policy and practice, and we are doing so. The report shows our challenges are more about improving sensitivity to the needs of all groups and less about intentional discrimination. We sincerely desire to strike the right balance between a person's right to freely exercise their religion and avoiding any appearance of establishing one. I encourage you to listen closely to General Brady's remarks, read the report thoroughly, and consider the process, findings, and recommendations. At this time, I'd like to introduce Lieutenant General Roger Brady, who will present his findings and recommendations. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the Secretary has just said, uh, I proceeded to the Air Force Academy on uh, 10 to 13 May with, uh, with the team to take the pulse of the Academy on the issue of religious respect. In preparation for that visit, <clears throat> we spent about a week reviewing Department of Defense and Air Force policy, reviewing media reports and previous U.S. Air Force Academy visits, coordinating with uh, USAFA uh, for interviews of key personnel, cadets, uh, and ensuring a broad demographic of individuals to participate in focus groups. Uh, we talked to over 300 people, including interviews with key personnel and cadets and a variety uh, of focus groups of cadets, faculty, and staff. The cadet focus groups were selected to provide a wide representation uh, by seniority and also by belief system. In all, there were 27 
focus groups and about uh, 69 individual interviews. Basically, we made ourselves available night and day for anybody who wanted to come talk to us. It uh, had people available to, uh, to talk to them, and people came to talk to us. We reviewed Academy surveys that had been done. We looked at the chaplaincy and its programs, the complaint mechanisms uh, of the Academy, and its educational programs. Now, subsequent to our visit, we did telephone interviews with several people who were not uh, at the uh, Academy when we were there. Uh, these included Chaplain Melinda Morton, Dr. Kirsten Leslie of the uh, Yale University Divinity School, and Mr. We Mikey Weinstein, uh, a 1977 graduate of the Air Force Academy who has expressed considerable concern about the Academy. Our charter, as I said, was to take the pulse on this issue. We were not there to investigate individual behavior per se, However, we made it clear to the people we talked to that if they provided us with specific information about particular events, we would refer that information to appropriate authorities. Uh, I referred seven specific cases of what appeared to me or to one of my team members to be questionable behavior uh, to the chain of command. The Air Force Academy, we found, is aggressively working the issue of religious respect and as a part of the ongoing effort by the leadership, the agenda for change that the Secretary just alluded to, the superintendent began to drill down into survey data that he had and picked up on an area of wider concern than might otherwise uh, have been obvious. Uh, he saw uh, the perception on the part of some that there was uh, an environment of religious uh, bias, uh, and he and his staff uh, jumped into that. As we talked to people using this methodology I just described, we heard a wide range of views, and you will see that as you read the report. Each focus group in the report is discussed and the, the nature of the discussion. The range of views went from concern over perceived bias to concern over the Air Force's possible reaction or overreaction to the perceived bias to some people who had a complete lack of awareness there was an issue and we had to explain what we were there for. We identified nine specific findings and nine recommendations, but the findings of the team can be summarized in three general areas. First, some academy practices left a perception among some groups at the academy that the academy was not addressing their religious needs, particularly groups that were less numerically represented in the population. Secondly, uh, there's the ongoing challenge of dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. Uh, and making sure that they understand the values of our Air Force, most notably respect for the beliefs of others in this case. Every 1st of July, we bring in 1,300 plus uh, fine young Americans. They come from very different backgrounds in terms of their experience with diversity. The only thing they have in common is they are really smart. Most of them are athletic. Some of them come from very small towns that are very homogeneous. Some of them come from very diverse backgrounds. Most of them know how to behave. Some of them need a little work. And sometimes uh, behavior uh, in a pretty hot pressure cooker environment of the academy results in some, some behavior that's not consistent with our Air Force. In those kinds of situations, you'll have the occasional uh, religious slur or disparaging remark, and we jump all over that. Uh, that's an issue that we will not tolerate in our Air Force. We do not tolerate in our Air Force, but it's something that we have to work every year as new folks come into our Air Force. Finally, there was a lack of awareness on the part of some faculty and staff, and perhaps cadets in uh, positions of authority, that as to what constitutes appropriate expressions of faith, particularly, uh, particularly in this setting, in superior subordinate relationships in a government institution. We found that the leadership of the USAFA uh, has addressed this issue aggressively and has deployed some initial training regarding religious respect. It is a significant first effort and more is in development now. We had very frank and open discussions at every level of the academy. The team was very impressed by the professionalism of both the cadets uh, and, the and the permanent party personnel. Let me discuss in, in a little more detail the uh, some of the recommendations that we made. First of all, and I should say that part of what the Secretary asked me to do was to ask myself, is this applicable 
do, do, did what we learned here, uh, is it something we should apply to the rest of the Air Force? And so what I found was, like you find when you visit any unit, is if you find something that is, that is wrong and there's a better management application uh, and it's a good thing to do, it's probably good to do everywhere. So my recommendations are for the entire Air Force. We need to develop, we found that the policy guidance is fine as far as policy guidance goes. It talks about accommodation, it talks about no discrimination, it talks about not restricting free exercise of religion, but it doesn't provide useful operational guidance to commanders regarding what is and is not appropriate in the area of religious expression. And we need to provide some guidance there. We believe that, uh, I have no reason to believe, that people who are doing things that I think were inappropriate uh, were doing so maliciously. In fact, I think they thought they had the best, uh, uh, the best intentions toward the cadets. Uh, I think in some cases they were wrong. Uh, but we have not provided guidance in that area. Uh, it's a difficult subject. Uh, we'll take it on, and we are already, have already begun development of that policy. We also need to enforce policy guidance regarding endorsement and advertising. And the groups that are on our base, how, do they adver how can they advertise on base, and does it comply with our values of respecting diversity of beliefs? Similarly, <clears throat> there are religious groups that, uh, that come on all of our bases, not just Air Force bases, but military bases around the world, and provide uh, a religious education to, to our people. Uh, General Jumper has asked in a preliminary message, and we're also uh, going to develop more specific policy as to ensuring that we have appropriate governance of these groups and making sure that they understand what our standards are regarding uh, respecting diversity of belief. Uh, we have, we're also asking our commanders, consistent with what we found at the Air Force Academy, to make sure that they comply with this policy regarding accommodation. As you plan operations, exercises, the various events associated with your mission, you need to think about uh, the various uh, diverse groups of your base and faith and belief systems and, and see if you need to, to work some accommodation issues regarding that. We also uh, see a need for uh, developing a wider cultural awareness, both internal to the Air Force and external in our employed environment. We learned after 9-11 that we as a military, as a Department of Defense, are probably not as culturally aware as we ought to be. Uh, we need to understand better the role of religion and culture more broadly on the way people think and act and make decisions. That's important for us in a diverse force. It's also important as we work with coalition partners uh, around the world. We are directing the, uh, or I'm recommending that we direct USAFA to develop a more integrated plan to work this into not just specific courses, but into everything they do in terms of athletic, academic, and military programs. And we should provide oversight from the air staff uh, to implement, uh, to help the USAFA form an interfaith ecumenical team, taking advantage of expertise in this area from outside the Department of Defense in developing this plan. Uh, we looked at complaint mechanisms. Of course, there's the chain of command, there's the military equal opportunity office, there's the equal employment office, but all of this, it appeared to us, was a bit confusing to the customer. So the academy is going to give us a plan for how they will provide a single point of contact that anybody who has a complaint about a cultural or, or climate issue can go there and then it can be put into the right, uh, into the right lane because some of those are specified by statute. We also uh, are saying that the Academy needs to continue, and in fact the whole Air Force needs to bolster our internal controls and our surveys. We survey, as you probably know, every year or every other year uh, our climate. We need to make sure that as we learn more about this issue and other issues in a diverse culture that we're asking the right questions so that in these anonymous surveys uh, we make sure that we stay abreast of what our people are thinking and what kind of leadership and operational climate that we are providing for them. Finally, we need to, for the Academy to provide continuing opportunities for all cadets to learn about, discuss, and debate issues of religion, culture, and spirituality in a developmental setting. 
The challenge here is uh, this is clearly a government institution. It's also the home of 4,018 to 22 year olds who are trying to learn and make decisions about some of the weightier matters of life. They need to be able to do that just like students at other universities get to do that. And we need to provide that in a developmental setting that helps them do that in a way that also incorporates the values of respect uh, for diversity. Uh, this is a, a premier institution wrestling with an issue that is a matter of widespread public debate that is not unique to the Air Force or the United States Air Force Academy. There are challenges at our academy. There are things that need to be done better. We've uh, identified those and uh, we're awaiting the Secretary's guidance now to proceed with uh, fixing what we need to fix and press on. Before we take your questions, it's important for you to know that I fully accept each of the nine recommendations General Brady has discussed. And I also support the work and recommendations of the National Conference on Ministry to the Armed Forces. In addition to accepting those recommendations, I'm sending my director of the Air Force Review Board's agency to visit the academy to ensure the military equal opportunity and equal employment opportunity processes are in order. We're also working with the academy to find experts from inside and outside of the Department of Defense who will help us refine and improve our character development and religious respect programs. Recently, using lessons learned at the Academy, General Jumper gave direction to all Air Force commanders, alerting them to be sensitive to religious respect issues. As we develop the improved operational gu guidelines called for by General Brady, we will share, share those and any new lessons we learn with our commanders. I'm also pleased to announce today the selection of Major General Select Irv Halter as the Academy's Vice Superintendent. This new position, which we've been working to establish for some time now at General Rosa's request, will support the Superintendent's continuing efforts to fully implement the Agenda for Change focused on building officers of character. Our mission to develop leaders of character for our nation requ requires us to continuously look at ourselves to ensure we're doing things right. When we identify things that may need improvement, we investigate them, fix them, and get on with the business of developing leaders for America and America's Air Force. I want to publicly thank General Brady and his team for their thorough and deliberate work. Also, I want to thank Jack Williamson of the National Conference on Ministry to the Armed Forces for his leadership and the conference's report. Finally, I thank Governor James Gilmore, Chairman of our Board of Visitors. Under his leadership, the Board of Visitors has been and will remain key to our progress. We benefit tremendously from his leadership and the Board of Visitors' advice. And we will continue to address this issue of religious respect openly with the Board of Visitors and with the Congress of the United States. In fact, Congressman John McHugh, the Chairman of the Personnel Subcommittee of the House Armed Services Committee, and I spoke this morning and agreed on the importance of a hearing on this matter. At this time, we'll be glad to take your questions. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to ask General Brady if I could. Yes, sir. Um, General, I, I, I think you'd agree that, that this can be an explosive subject in today's world beyond the Air Force and beyond, <coughs> beyond the Academy because of the clash you have now around the world between the ideas and the Muslim religion and Christianity. You say in this report that, that, uh, that there was a perception of religious intolerance at the Academy by many at the Academy and that there was not overt overt uh, mm -hmm. intolerance. Mm -hmm. Was there intolerance, any intolerance at the academy? And was this by, by people in authority or leadership, Christians at the academy? I think there were, I think there were some, uh, some let, me, let me handle it in two ways. Uh, yes, I think there were, there were cases where people uh, have, uh, have said some things, perhaps from a lectern, uh, that were overreaching. 
uh, for getting their, uh, their position. Uh, that put uh, cadets perhaps uh, in an untenable position in terms of, gee, am I going to pass physics 101 if I don't agree with this guy? You mean Christian? Right. Uh, so, uh, so uh, yes, I think that I, I think that occurred, and I think that uh, that a, a, a significant part of that, I'm convinced, was that uh, we haven't. This has been, as you point out, sir, uh, this is an issue of religious debate. We can all agree on there's no debate, there's no issue about disparaging remarks and, and, and religious slurs. Uh, there is a debate that gets enjoined if you talk about uh, expression. I think that the people who have done this, my experience talking to them, was that they were well-intended but wrong. Uh, but we haven't sorted this out very well in terms of operational guidance that's useful uh, to them. I, I guess I guess I'm sorry to sum that up. There was, there were instances of religious intolerance, not just perceptions of it, but there were there was religious intolerance. Well, I don't know that that's that's intolerance. It's certainly insensitivity to to the situation. It it doesn't necessarily mean that, I, in my view, that it was intolerance. And uh, sometimes we I think we get confused about the difference between disagreement and intolerance. Uh, also, the 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 concern about about the expressions of faith that I would have. In, in a context that's inappropriate is, is when, it, when it raises questions between a subordinate and an insubordinate about whether or not agreement or disagreement with it would put me at an advantage or a disadvantage. And so those are the issues that, that, I, that I think we need to I work on. I want to also address that, that uh, we, we have to recognize uh, that there are um, raw nerves among some of our population out there uh, because in our institutional practices, um, as General Brady said, we may not have been sufficiently aware uh, of their unique needs and the need to think about them before we did things like schedule a military training event in the middle of Passover, um, make it, uh, put it, put the onus on a member of a minority religion to always seek uh, uh, to, to get a pass to get out of training because they wanted to go uh, worship. Um, so we can be a little more thoughtful about that. But if you're at the, at the receiving end, always having to push, always having, having to ask, always having to uh, seek permission to deviate from the norm, uh, you know, that can, that can be pretty irritating to you over a long period of time. That did occur. And we have fixed that. We're much more aware now of our uh, policies and practices uh, so that we accommodate these things to the best of our ability within the mission. I have a follow up on, on, this, uh, on this idea of uh, the findings of perception by mm -hmm. well intentioned mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you say that, it creates the impression in some people's mind that perhaps the people who were offended mm -hmm. are over, being oversensitive. Did you find in, in, in your investigation that people were being oversensitive uh, at all to these uh, well, expressions? That's, you know, that's something, uh, uh, do I think somebody's being oversensitive? I, I'd never say that. I mean, people feel what they feel. And, and so, so if, if, if they're offended by it, we need to be, uh, we need to be uh, aware of it and, and, and understand. We also need to teach our young people uh, and our not so young people that if you're offended, you can say, hey, you know, that kind of offends me. I don't really want to hear that. We can do that and, and we need to, and we, that's a part of the developmental process of our people that we need to do. Uh, we, we've done it in every other area. Uh, and we need to do it in this area. So I think I think that's something that that will work. Let me yes, just, ma'am. Let me just let me just jump in and add one thing uh, on on this. Uh, to the extent that some people who received a message uh, took it as offensive, then then we respected that that opinion. Uh, the thing that uh, we uh, we corrected were people who were standing up in front of cadets, e expressing a personal belief in a clear position of authority that was not appropriate or sensitive to the uh, feelings of the whole group. That's the part that was corrected and corrected in a timely, in a timely manner. So it's whether it was received, it was how, how it was received is uh, a matter of uh, uh, whether it was offensive or not. It was inappropriate to transmit uh, 
for, for uh, instructors to transmit in that but mode. Not necessarily what they say, but the, the context the context in, in, in which, which they said, said it, yeah. and in a position of authority, standing up in front of a class with perhaps a uniform on, certainly is a in, in a position of authority that uh, that we uh, that's the behavior we sought to correct. Marley, yes, ma'am. Um, can you tell us how widespread that practice was? I know you didn't do a statistical analysis of it, but just to give us a sense, it, it went beyond General Weta. And also, did the fact that um, the Air Force Academy is at Colorado Springs, which is a center for evangelical Christians um, in the United States, there's a lot of, does that have any influence on the, the atmosphere on campus? Uh, it could have. Uh, to, to, the, to the first part of your question, uh, what's, what, how widespread was this, what you asked me? Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, we talked to people, as I said, we talked to the athletic department, academic department, cadet wing, and, and we found, uh, we found some, uh, some people that expressed it in each one of those areas. But in each one of those areas, we had people say, that didn't happen in my department, or that doesn't happen on my team. I'm teaching, you know, I'm coaching tiddlywinks, and I haven't got time for that. Uh, so, so does it exist a, a little bit in each department? We think so. I mean, the indications are. But is it pervasive in each one of those departments? No, it is not. Uh, interestingly, there were 10 young cadets in my office Monday, this last Monday, who happened to be here on Operation Air Force during their three-week tour with the Operational Air Force. I asked them to come down and talk to me. They came in. I sat down. I gave them the same spiel, basically, uh, that I gave you. Uh, I also said, hey, let me give you an example. <clears throat> I gave them an example of what a, what a professor might say. Hey, uh, I'm this guy, and I believe this, and welcome to Physics 101. We're having a prayer meeting tonight. I'd really like for you to attend. Uh, would you come? I said, did you ever have anybody do anything like that? Did you ever hear anything like that? One young woman said, yeah, I think I heard something like that once. How about the rest of you? No, I've never heard that. So does it happen? Yes, it has happened. Is it really widespread? I don't think so. And, and that's the sense that I got having talked to a lot of people. Is there a major outsider evangelical um, face on campus? Is, is it a place that, because you talked about outside groups coming onto campus and how you need to mm -hmm. um, regulate them. How, how prevalent is that? Well, there are, we have, there's a program at the academy called SPIRE. Like everything we do, it has an acronym. Um, special program in religious education. Think of it as Sunday school on Monday night. Uh, for an hour and a half, there are 19 groups who are sponsored by our chaplaincy, overseen by our chaplaincy onto campus. They involve a number of uh, Christian Protestant groups. They also involve a Catholic group, an LSD, uh, a, a LDS group, uh, you have to be careful with your acronyms. Uh, no offense. Uh, a Buddhist group uh, and a Jewish group. Uh, currently, I'm not sure there is a Muslim group, uh, and uh, they could have if they wanted to. If they wanted to have one, uh, and they they come on base and for an hour and a half or so. So, so is there a presence out the base? Are there people interested in our cadets? Yes. Let me say that this uh, SPIRE activity also happens at other bases. Mm -hmm. And the difference between the academy and other bases is that virtually uh, 24 hours of the day of the academy cadet's life is, is regulated. Uh, on a normal Air Force base, we're on a 24-hour rhythm too, but you have time off where you go home and you have your choice of activities you choose to engage in uh, uh, during your free time. The free time is pretty much regulated at the academy, so uh, rather than send people uh, uh, off base, these, these groups are allowed to come on. And uh, our, our charter and our, uh, our challenge is to make sure that uh, the groups that do come on are, uh, have the proper oversight and regulation at, uh, and the messages they send uh, are uh, within the bounds of, uh, uh, of what, we, what we think is correct. Follow up on that. Of those 19, how many are Protestant uh, Christian? Uh, probably... 13, 14, I don't know. It's in the report. All, all 19 of them are, are laid out in the report for you. Um, this gentleman yes. back. Huh? Yes, uh, can you tell me if, if an incident like this were to occur from a professor or someone giving, making these types of remarks from a lectern, is there a discipline or sanction program that's be, that is either in place or, or being developed that would respond to it? Well, I think two things. The answer is, uh, is yes, we have a chain of command, and the faculty are within a chain of command like everyone else. 
Uh, and so, uh, so incidents like this are reported can be immediately corrected. Uh, but in the, in the longer term, going forward, uh, you know, I would go back to the comments I made about more specific, more operationally friendly guidance regarding um, appropriateness. Let me, let me say on, on this, um, General Rosa has been through this subject with his leadership team. All right, so, that, so we've talked a lot about this. Uh, people who needed counseling have gotten counseling. Uh, his team. Uh, are on board with him around their mission of developing officers of character. Uh, and they are now vastly more sensitized than they have been in the past about what uh, are the appropriate guidelines to, our, uh, to the best of our ability to, to advise them now. We have some work to do to help them stay inside the lines. Um, but the, the point I want to make is that this, this team is on board with General Rosa and the vision now. It, they are aligned around the mission of developing officers of, of character, and they're going to do it respect, respecting the Constitution. So, so. The question of discipline, the seven cases that were referred to the chain of command, can you give us the details of what those were? Are they in the report? No. It would be appropriate to do that. Uh, a couple of them do. So, General, when, when it says on the first finding that some faculty members and coaches consider it their duty to mm -hmm. profess their faith mm -hmm. and discuss the issue in the classrooms, mm -hmm. uh, that is no longer the case? Or well, I, th I don't know that. Uh, I wouldn't say they don't still feel that way, but they will, they will uh, are being made aware that, uh, uh, that, that, that there is a setting where that is inappropriate. And what, what I found, as you discuss it with people, is, is that, that People sometimes have not thought this through about, okay, let's remember, you are a professor, perhaps a, a relatively senior officer, you're talking to a cadet that's struggling in your class who doesn't believe what you're saying. What position have you put that in? That can be construed easily uh, as, as, as coercive, and, and so that's what we're dealing with. General. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to go back a little bit to the um, the idea that you have in the report that this is not institutional. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how you reconcile that with the fact that you've got staff members that are involved. You know, these aren't just cadets kind of preaching to other cadets or the religious slurs. You've got the coach putting up this banner. You've got, you know, General Weida who was questioned about these emails and included things in it. And you've got you've got faculty at the beginning of classes saying this is what I believe. So, and, and you've also, in one of your attachments, Kay said that the faculty is not diverse and the hiring practices tend to favor evangelical Christians. So that's a all, perception. We don't know that that's true, but that's something we're looking at. From the, yeah. Given all that, I yeah. wonder how you can reconcile yeah. that Pardon? with this not, given all those factors, I'm wondering how you reconcile that with it not being institutional because these people are certainly part well, of the Well, because I think, I think it goes back to your leadership, and I think it goes back to, uh, to whether or not the leadership uh, is, insens is sensitive or is aware of the issue and is dealing with the issue. Uh, if you had a uh, if you had a leadership that was clueless or knew about it and wasn't doing anything about it, I would think you had an institutional problem. Otherwise, I don't think it is an institutional. And it's problem. also a fact that uh, it was uh, General Rosa in the uh, surveys that he took that uncovered the problem as a part of this agenda for change that we're marching along to uh, uh, institutionalize the core values of the Air Force and the Air Force Academy uh, along with the rest of the Air Force. Uh, and this is uh, this is part of that process that uncovered this, and uh, and he took action on it. So, in, in all of the counseling that uh, I'm aware of, no one has come back and said, "No, I'm not going to do that." We uh, they have. We need they to have. ask you about uh, Captain uh, Melinda uh, Morton, who you said you uh, you talked to. She has submitted her resignation from the Air Force now, mm -hmm. and has uh, made comments indicating that she. Uh, uh, is not uh, certain about the commitment in changing the atmosphere at the uh, uh, academy. Can you tell us w what was the situation with her? Was she, did you find that she was uh, in any way adversely affected by her participation in this? And what was her assignment that she was offered that she turned down? And, uh, uh, I'll make one brief statement about that, and then I'll tell you why I'm not going to talk to you about it anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, Captain Morton was upset, obviously. She's made a number of comments. She's made a couple of allegations about the Air Force regarding her assignment and, and what she perceived as her removal from the job inappropriately. And because she made those accusations that were not just about the academy but against the Air Force more broadly in the assignment system, Mr. Dominguez, I think, appropriately said this is something somebody outside the Air Force needs to look at. And so he asked the Department of Defense 
uh, inspector general to look at that and that issue is is under investigation now with, with regards to the commitment the commitment to change um, I, I don't know how more committed you can get I've got the chief of staff standing here uh, I'm standing here uh, John Rosa found this in surveys in the spring of 2004 and brought it to the Board of Visitors uh, anxious for their help and guidance and assistance in fixing the problem he did not have to do that he did not have to put it into the public he wanted to change he did the right thing we are all committed to helping him um, restore this this institution to its rightful uh, place of preeminence uh, among uh, uh, military institutions and academic institutions uh, yes sir, we have time, sir. Uh, one more question. Well, I, did you share your findings results experiences with the other academies Coast Guard Army Navy I guess the merchant Marine. yes I sent it to them this morning and have you had any preliminary you said you had a Navy person yes. on your are they surprised at this at the Air Force Academy? Do they have this sort of problem at the Naval and the? Uh, I can't I can't speak for 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 the other academies and wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to. Uh, when when we asked the Naval Academy if they I asked the superintendent at the Naval Academy if they'd like to participate, he said absolutely. He sent me his senior staff judge advocate. Uh, we were happy to have him. Uh, because there, there was at least an awareness that they would have to deal with the same kinds of issues, whether or not they are to the extent they are, I don't know. Uh, let me just let me just uh, make one one uh, final statement, if I might, with the secretary's permission. Uh, we have uh, a group of outstanding cadets at the United States Air Force Academy. We are all very proud of these outstanding men and women who come, uh, highly qualified, as the secretary uh, as the secretary said, and for 99.9% uh, .9 of them. Uh, they are looking for the guidance to do the right thing. Uh, we have superb leadership in the form of General uh, Rosa, who has taken this agenda for change, and he has, uh, he has run with it. Uh, he has the backing of uh, my personal backing and the backing of the Secretary, so when problems like this arise, uh, we are transparent with these problems. And uh, we don't let them roll around. Uh, we uh, take them on and we, uh, and we, and we work these problems. Uh, General Rosa has uh, taken action in, as a commander out there that's appropriate to the, uh, to the situation, and uh, we're very proud of what he's done. And we're going to continue to support uh, this agenda for change with all the energy that we have uh, until we get uh, the academy to the place that uh, it uh, does not suffer from these, uh, from these sorts of issues. Thank you. This is important. Can you please take just a question or two? Sir, please. General, General Jumper? <clears throat> Nobody's used the word Christian yet. Oh, my God.